on the subject of spinning plates and procrastination. I want to talk about the idea of delaying the inevitable. No, that's not right. Uh, delaying things that you should be doing. There's this idea that, I even fell into the word inevitable there, that someday it will get done. When you have something important, I'm getting so ahead of myself, even the way that I'm arranging my sentences here is so bizarre, and this is really meta that I'm interrupting my own sentences to give a meta-analysis already. But um, when you are trying to get something done, when you have a goal that's like a really big goal that's going to take a very long time to do, it's an exercise and delay of gratification. And there's this tendency when you have really big goals, when you have dreams that you think someday it will get done. Someday I'm going to be a movie star. That, I mean, that's a little bit childish. I don't want to necessarily say that. It's naive. Um, when something is a very strong obligation, but it feels so distant from you, there's this idea that, well, one day it will get done when the, when the stars align just right. But that takes us away from the perspective of we have to do what we can in the moment right now to take steps towards improving that. Incremental advancement is important for keeping up with momentum. It's those little wins that keep you on the path towards getting big projects done. I'm actually in my day job. There's a lot of planning for really, really big projects with uh, software development and, you know, computer stuff. That takes a lot of planning because there's all these different systems that are going to be integrated and you have so many people that are working on so many things at once. There's, there's a lot of planning and coordination that goes on. And it's in order to break things down so you actually start working on deliverables is the technical term for it. You have bite-sized chunks that you can get done in one to three weeks. That, that's the whole idea with agile development and having sprints is breaking things down into a series of tasks that can be done in a manageable time frame so that we take the big stuff that is for the long term and you break it down into uh, immediate, not necessarily immediate goals, but more uh, immediate goals that are measurable and timely. So instead of trying to say, we're going to have this website done in, you know, we're going to have this website done by two years from now. Well, that could be a reasonable goal depending on the complexity and everything with it, but you might want to break it down. Okay, I want the navigation bar done by the end of this week so that I have like the home home about us and buy our products. You know, it's a very simple, I don't want to say it's super simple because then the functionality of the, um, of how the website's intended to be used and the experience comes into play. And that's where things get a little bit dicey and moving from the digital world back to the real world. It's when we, tr when we try to experience, when we do experience the the difficulties of making making our dreams come true of going through the necessary steps to achieve our goals it's uh, it's within actually experiencing well what's it like to uh, I, I always wanted to run a marathon but what's it like to actually train every day to be a distance runner or to take that up as a hobby that you're really dedicated to. Um, it's within that experience that you recognize the, uh, the greater difficulties to it. You recognize the subtleties that are involved with the dedication of 
becoming part of that lifestyle. And that's it's real difficult to establish new habits when you have a set of habits that you are accustomed to. And so moving from that into the habits of making good goals, there's this, if you already have the idea of these wishy-washy goals that are somewhere out there, but you don't feel personally motivated to do something or you feel hopeless or helpless that you can't really do anything right now. Maybe if I feel better tomorrow, then I'll go out and start jogging. Now, when it's something that is a physical motion, like jogging, physical training, that's much more, much more easy, more easily directly controlled than a mental state. If you're like, I'm going to write this moving piece of music one day that's going to change the world, but you just don't feel motivated at all, and you feel like you're, whenever you're trying to write something, whenever you put together pieces, it just doesn't come together. It, it can be really discouraging, and those dreams can still feel very far off. So you have to develop the habit of making smaller goals along the way. And that involves a lot of planning. And there's this misconception that planning is not progress. You need to have, but at the same time, people understand very simply that you need to have a path ahead of you in order to follow, in order to keep on the right track, in order to even know what the right track is in order to achieve your goal. Where if you're just running blindly in some direction, any direction, then you might be running in the wrong direction. And that might hurt your progress. I'm, I'm trying to go west, but I don't have a compass, but I want to do something, and I end up heading south. Well, even if I'm not going away from my goal, I'm not going towards it, but at the same time, I'm putting a lot of effort into something that's not helping me reach my goal. So there's a lost opportunity cost that's there. I'm not going to get into an economic analysis or anything, but uh, it, it is important to have the perspective in mind that you have to be... This sounds like such bootleg self-help guru talk. Uh, you have to consider a mindset of thinking for the long term if you do have very big lofty goals. Like uh, I'll, I'll just I'll try and humanize it a little bit more with me with writing. In my personal case, I have I have thousands of pages at this point, thousands and thousands of pages of uh, handwritten notes, digital notes uh, of of outlines, character designs scenes, so many scenes for different novels. And I, <laughs> I enjoy the process of creation, but I don't enjoy the process of editing and organizing. This is something that I realize a whole lot more now where in my day job, I'm involved with a lot of design and a lot of planning where I have a new appreciation for, <clears throat> for design and planning as part of the process of work and editing things through checking to make sure that all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. That's a very important part, especially when it comes to computer programming, because I mean, it's much more direct where you're testing to see if a functionality works. You're testing to see if, if you click on the link, it takes you to the place that you think it's supposed to go to based off of the functionality that you want for your website. It's not so easy to test with a book that um, I have this scene and it, when someone reads this scene, when someone consumes this scene, it takes them to the emotional place that I want them to go, that it delivers the experience that I want them to feel, which was my intention of writing this scene in the first place. That's much harder to see. Of course, you have beta readers for that and you get um, feedback for that. That's a relatively slow process and it's not very, um, it's not very immediate as one thing. But the other deal with that is you can't test that yourself 
because it's a perspective. When you are trying to convey an experience, you are trying to take your perspective and to take your feelings, in essence, and show them to another person and paint them onto another person, carry them over to that other person. Um, and part of, I mean, part of why I love writing is because when you're developing scenes, you develop these emotions, you flesh out these ideas, you create these experiences. And it's strange to consider that I, I've had so many moving experiences from, from writing and from sharing meaningful thoughts and feelings, sharing very vulnerable feelings as well with characters and stories or sharing vulnerable ideas with scenes that I paint in stories. And it's nerve wracking to, to want to share that and to not know if someone would understand the intention behind it or if someone would, I don't know if it's more disturbing, but more sorrowful for someone to misunderstand it or for someone to not see it at all. But in the case of something going unpublished, that's its own sort of grief, that there's not even the chance for someone to understand it if you don't put it out there. So that's my big lofty goal. It Well, it's not to get every single word that I've ever written published, no. It's to create a steady stream of books. Um, but I have to focus on one thing at a time and I have to take it one day at a time, one page at a time, even one word at a time. And something that got me thinking about this a lot is how messy my desk is, where I have, um, out of habit, I've always had a notepad next to my computer. I like writing things out longhand and um, everything from grocery lists to, to character designs and story ideas, scene ideas. Uh, I love writing things out longhand. I, I don't do it for absolutely everything. Yes, I use electronic media for writing a great deal. The vast majority of what I write is through electronic media. And now I do a lot of writing through voice to text, um, which is, uh, it's, it's, it's it's its own art style. I hate when I do that, when I use the same word twice like that, but it makes sense in that. The experience of writing through speech is its own experience. That's how you get around the, the double pronoun use is you actually display what that pronoun is in full, even though that's a bit tedious to do. And I mean, in spoken language, we make mistakes, air quotes, mistakes like that. It's still intelligible communication, but we make mistakes like that all the time. And that's a different kind of communication. That's a different kind of intelligibility, hearing that as opposed to seeing it written down. So that adds its own dynamic level of, um, of needing to be edited, of needing to be taken into consideration when writing from uh, speech to text. But what I was getting at is uh, I have notes that are on uh, my physical desk and I, I was looking around and I was thinking, you know, these notes have been here for a month where I, uh, a month ago, I plotted out a book and I, I thought I was going to speed run this book. Yeah, I had lots of good ideas. I was really feeling it. I'm really feeling it. Yeah, I was in. I was into. I was inspired to write, and then I really messed things up by uh, taking on a diet and fitness challenge.